Everyone loves LEGO. It doesn't matter if you played with Duplo, license sets, original themes or Bionicles, LEGO has something for everybody. And for the past 25 years or so, that also includes various LEGO media, like comic books, movies, TV shows and of course, LEGO video games. LEGO's been around for a while, but LEGO games only became a thing at the turn of the millennium, and while most definitely made to advertise and sell the bricks, it isn't hard to see the gameplay potential in a modular toy such as LEGO. Building your own minifigs, vehicles, houses, or entire worlds for that matter, sounds like a perfect fit for the medium. And with so many themes under its belt, LEGO was surely primed for success. In 2023, I think we can conclude they were indeed successful, largely owing that success to the 2005 smash hit LEGO Star Wars The Video Game. Developed by Traveler's Tales, LEGO Star Wars introduced a gameplay loop that would to some extent feature in pretty much every LEGO game released since. There have been a few outliers, but we'll get to that later. So, LEGO's done well, but having grown up in that early LEGO games era, I can't help but feel something was lost from those first attempts, when LEGO was still experimenting and trying to navigate the realm of video game. The very first LEGO game came out in 1995 on the Sega Pico, an educational console whose existence I was oblivious to until right now. The game was called LEGO Fun to Build, and its gameplay consisted of very simplified building puzzles and minigames. There's not much more to this one, it's clearly made for a very young audience, and on top of that, the game was exclusive to Japan. Luckily, two years later, LEGO Island was released internationally for the PC. And this one's nostalgic for a lot of people, often being their first and most beloved game from the early LEGO lineup. Since it was a bit before my time, I never got to play it until now, but honestly, I can see why so many people remember it fondly. At its core, it's still a bunch of minigames, but this time you can roam around an entire 3D island and do whatever you want. There's an actual storyline featuring a pizza delivery boy named uh, Pepperoni. What are you from the condiment family? Who unknowingly delivers a pizza to the Brickster, a local criminal who uses it to break out of jail and wreaks havoc on the island until you stop him. Apart from that, there's racing, building, and a few other events with all sorts of wacky characters. The game certainly has a personality. Want to try building a gym buggy? I'll be at the information center. We gotta put up a sign. No pets allowed. Maybe a bit too much sometimes, but you can tell a lot of effort was put into it, and while it is a bit rough around the edges, the game's surprisingly solid for what it is. Whatever that's supposed to be. In 1998, several LEGO games came out, and also me. I, I mean I was born. A first of the bunch is LEGO Loco, a top-down railroad builder in which you can construct a town populated by little LEGO guys. Come on, just look at them walk around, that's so cute. They get on the trains, they drive the cars, it... Is that a baby? Is that a baby in a carriage by itself just w traveling around? That's not okay, LEGO. That's not an okay message to send. Anyway, you get a brief tutorial and then you're let loose. So, of course, I built Banktown. Even if you get through the dense forestation, you'll be stopped by a wall of volcanoes and obelisks. And of course, there are the four monolithic banks, uh, overlooking the grateful citizens of Banktown. If you couldn't tell, there's not much to do here. No missions or challenges, so you just make your own fun. I'm definitely not against games like that, but LEGO Loco doesn't really give you that much to work with. Still, I probably would have had some fun with this one as a kid, so it gets a passing grade. Next up is LEGO Chess. Hi, I'm the king. Welcome to my castle. Hi, I'm the king. It's chess with Legos, and not much else. There's a few different themes to pick from, and you get a special animation for each type of piece interacting, which is cool, but after you've seen them once, you start skipping, because they take so damn long. Unfortunately, the game kept crashing on the second level, so I quickly moved on to the next entry on the list, which is LEGO Creator. And I couldn't get this one to run at all. He's juggling. The game never turns on. It's, it's just juggling. You know, it's quite funny, back then we used to have a LEGO Creator disc at home and that one didn't work either, because some things never change. 
But fear not, LEGO Creator will have some representation down the line with Knight's Kingdom. Moving into 1999, LEGO yet again released a trio of games, or excuse me, two games and LEGO Friends. Now listen, I have nothing against the LEGO Friends theme, but the game in question is linked to LEGO in name only. It's all 2D animated with no LEGO to be seen, the stylish box standard for this type of game. You know what, screw it, this one is disqualified. That guy's fucking crazy. Luckily, after that mistake, LEGO entered banger territory. <laughs> LEGO Racers is sick. The music is a beat and bloopy, everything is snappy and right to the point, the racing is fun, the power-up system is inventive and uses the nature of LEGO as a gameplay mechanic, what? Who could have thought that would be fun using LEGO in LEGO game? You can create your own driver and build a car using bricks from the contemporary themes, not to mention when you beat a circuit champion you get all their bricks too. And while there's not much of a story beyond just becoming the best racer, the little introduction cutscenes for a champion are a nice touch. I love LEGO Racers, but it's not without its blemishes. The driving controls are not perfect, you could say it's a bit difficult for kids, a lot of the tracks repeat, and overall the game definitely had more potential. With that said, LEGO Racers is still fun to play, and a damn solid entry in the LEGO game's catalog. More importantly, the catalog of my heart. I'm not even kidding, if I saw this Rocket Racer set from LEGO Stunts as a kid, I would shit my pants. Moving on, we have the very different but equally as wonderful LEGO Rock Raiders, a sci-fi themed RTS of all things in which your main goal is to mine for energy crystals to power your stranded spaceship. Bro, these look so tasty. The main draw for me here is the vibe, it's pretty damn unique and not just among its LEGO contemporaries either. The sound effects, the music, the lighting, texturing, all coupled with the actual LEGO sets is so distinctly nostalgic to me and clearly I'm not the only one. Rock Raiders has an active community to this day, in fact a fan made remake called Manic Miners just got released a while ago. Going back to the original, the game once again features some voice acting in form of Cheevier, uh, given new mission briefings and instructions on how to play. We had just begun mining activities in a deeper cavern when disaster struck. There is a train station in Japan where the cat wears a hat. This is the essence of what makes Japan so great. Gameplay is pretty straightforward. You teleport in your rock raiders to mine which yields you crystals as well as ore. Both are needed to construct buildings which then enable you to teleport in vehicles increasing your traversal and mining capabilities. There's a bunch of different hazards like landslides, lava, as well as creatures like slugs and rock monsters, just to name a few. The game has a decent selection of levels, many including some sort of a difficulty modifier like lack of oxygen or progressing environmental hazards. It's a good time all around, although you will most definitely get frustrated by the often confused AI of these little Lego men. Specific orders get ignored, priorities aren't respected, and they just love to walk anywhere but the power paths I made for them. The jank's tolerable, but it can be an issue if you want to get a good score, especially as the levels get harder. Ultimately, it's an RTS aimed at kids that's supposed to sell LEGO, and it fulfills that purpose more than well enough. Whoa. The year 2000 was even busier for LEGO, releasing 4 games in total. I'm not gonna be talking about the preschool and kindergarten games by the way, just so you know. Sorry. First one's Legoland, a pretty fun park builder slash manager. I played this one a bunch as a kid and there's a lot of stuff to like here. The music is once again upbeat and fun, the sound effects are downright jolly, Go, boy. the game's pretty lean and clean. The story and humor are both fine, not as wild as LEGO Island for example, but there's cutscenes and those are pretty sweet. I especially loved them when I was a kid. There's once again a voice acted guide, this time in form of park duty manager uh, Jonathan Abelbody. I liked him as a kid, but I don't know, there's something wrong with him. Oh no, Bob's had one of his funny turns. The campaign is okay, some of the levels drag on a bit, but those damned inspector appraisals. These were the reason I couldn't complete the game as a kid. He is an arbitrary checklist of things you need to have in the park, so instead of being creative and aesthetic about it, you just plop down every decoration you can to fill the quotas. And this is non-negotiable, you need the variety or you won't pass the appraisals. You aren't doing too bad. Whatever, at least you get the cutscene at the end of it. Rock Raiders cameo, yay! 
All in all, Legoland's definitely a step up from the likes of Lego Loco, but it doesn't yet reach the heights of something like Roller Coaster Tycoon. Next up is Alpha Team. I loved Alpha Team as a kid, had a bunch of the sets, and I always won the game because I saw it in catalogs. Never got it though. Turns out that was definitely for the better, because Alpha Team is a puzzle game. I can't judge this one too harshly because it's not necessarily bad, it's just not my idea of what Alpha Team was about. The sets were all filled with action, but in the game you just lay down a bunch of items that tell the characters where to go or let them access places. You could argue, since they're spies, the more tactical gameplay fits, but I don't know, I just don't feel like it captures the spirit of the sets. The worst thing about this one is by far the camera. There are all these stupid angles to switch through and no way to properly see the whole course. I don't know if this was some weird hardware limitation or somehow intended obstruction, but it sucks. The story's nothing to write home about and I don't know, the game just doesn't do it for me. LEGO Stunt Rally is basically slot cars. You control the speed and steering is done for you, though you can influence it. You got power-ups, track hazards, it's pretty standard. The story mode here is again okay, nothing super exciting. The best part of Stunt Rally is definitely the track builder. I messed around with it a ton when I was younger, building rows and rows of loop-de-loops and power-ups. Apart from that, there's some basic car customization, nothing to the level of LEGO racers, but at least you get the car of each rival you beat, which is always welcome. I love when games award you the boss's gear that they just gave you a hard time with. It makes you feel like you took their power in a way. And I know this is such a simple and inconsequential example to make this point, but it's super immersive, especially for a kid. Speaking of immersion, the next entry has you create your own content entirely. LEGO Creator Knight's Kingdom, along with the original LEGO Creator and the subsequent Harry Potter themed spin-offs, was the closest equivalent of playing with virtual LEGO at the time. The game is basically a sandbox to create your own scenes, with the only semblance of a storyline existing in the tutorial, which doesn't last very long. Once you get to make your own worlds, you can use pre-built structures as well as make your own models, though this doesn't extend to everything. A lot of the items and minifigs or actors here have actions which you can trigger, and most importantly you can blow stuff up with projectiles and explosives. I remember quite liking this one and making all kinds of different scenarios, so upon revisiting it I thought I'd make my most elaborate one yet. A dark and gruesome story where the heroes fail and evil rules supreme. But the game started freaking out when I put too many items in, so uh, let's just skip to the final scene. You have lost this war, Richard the Strong. Your friends are dead, and soon you're going to join them. Any last words? If you've just started LEGO Creator Knight's Kingdom, click on Start to get going. Click on me. And Please then just blow him up. Any button you. Two thousand one was the year of sequels. Both Lego Island and Lego Racers got their second installments, each of them improving on some aspects while regressing in others. Starting with Lego Island 2 Brickster's Revenge, we got more of a globe-trotting adventure, including a wider selection of minigames and things to do. The island itself is a lot more open and the variety of vehicles has grown too. The controls are modernized and there's an overall increase in polish. The humor, I don't know if it's better or worse than the first game, it got a few chuckles out of me. Pepper, what are you doing? My best. But it definitely lost that signature wackiness, which made it a bit more annoying this time around. Unfortunately, those are pretty much all the positives. While there are a lot of minigames, their quality is rather poor, and it gets worse as the story goes along. The expanded environments are underutilized and meaningful exploration happens only on the main island and not very often at that. The story talks about LEGO things like rebuilding the island after the breakster once again destroys it, there's the Constructopedia and so on, but you don't do much LEGO adjacent activities at all, save for the bridge building minigame which sucks by the way, it's a real shame. Also, can I just point out that there is an actual superhero present on the island who could help solve this crisis, but instead the pizza delivery kid has to do it because Mr. Railway Guy is too busy making sure nobody crosses the tracks where they shouldn't. Oh, and uh, Pepper talks a lot more in this one. Pepper, sir dude. Uh, not great. Whoa! Okay. Moving on to LEGO Racers 2, we see a transition from circuits to hub worlds, making the game essentially open world. Each of the worlds features some minor exploration in the form of hidden golden bricks and minigames, and while the minigames are essentially all the same, they do at least award you upgrades which make the game a lot easier. A bit too much actually. 
The story works well enough, it sure had me hyped up as a kid to take on all these different champions and of course face Rocket Racer once again. The game has nice visuals and a few cool flourishes like bricks being knocked off vehicles when they take damage. The sound effects and especially the music are a highlight for me, even if the various tracks could use a few more, well, tracks. Speaking of tracks, here's where the game starts to lose its footing a bit. Every track except for the final race is set up within the hub worlds, meaning that you will be seeing a lot of the landmarks multiple times. This wouldn't necessarily be an issue if the worlds were a bit larger and featured more intricate spaces. The original had its tracks designed as singular units, so they were able to cram in a lot more visual detail, hazards, shortcuts, and overall complexity. Here, not even the bosses get their unique tracks, and I'm personally a fan of the bosses, but I'm sure they could have done more to play into their individual traits with the track design. It's certainly more immersive for the races to take place within one traversable world, but more could have been done to not fully sacrifice the handmade feel. On the other hand, the game isn't very long, so it's not like you'll be seeing every part of it too much. Now, even as someone who is more than fond of LEGO Racers 2, I have to admit the racing leaves a lot to be desired. It pretty much did a 180 and went from a bit too sticky and tight to not having enough traction and sliding around if you aren't careful, regardless of upgrades. Equally tragic is the loss of the power-up system, replaced here by a painfully basic selection of offensive and defensive options. One thing that wasn't changed but dialed back instead was the car building system. Sure, we got more chassis to pick from and some cool pieces were added, but you no longer got the car parts of bosses after defeating them and there's a hard cap on the number of bricks you can use regardless of car type. Last but not least, the game's difficulty has been significantly lowered. I assume a lot of it has to do with the open track designs and by extension the AI, but it's a shame regardless. To be perfectly honest, I sected both 1 and 2 when I was a kid, though I definitely had more fun exploring in LEGO Races 2 than actually racing. Despite all that, the game has a nice atmosphere and if it had more depth and polish, it could have been even better than the original, albeit different. But who knows, maybe I'm just too biased. Kicking off 2002 is Football Mania, or Soccer Mania for the Cowboys. To tell the truth, I'm probably not the right person to be reviewing this one. I don't care about football, and honestly, I don't know if the average kid who does would want to play this over FIFA, which was already at large before 2002. LEGO seemed to be targeting younger kids, judging by the lack of offsides, fouls, and so on, but ultimately, if a kid is old enough to play actual football, they're probably old enough to play FIFA. The game has power-ups, which is about the only thing making it different. You play against other LEGO themes, like pirates or knights, who you can recruit upon their defeat, but there's not really much else to it. There are little cutscenes for scoring a goal or getting scored on, some of which are very unsportsmanship-like. What a way to teach kids to be good sports, LEGO! The second release of 2002 was Island Extreme Stunts, a third LEGO Island game. For some reason, this was the year they decided to drop the word LEGO from their titles, but make no mistake, this is still LEGO Island. A lot has improved since the last installment, the controls are better, the exploration is more fun and emphasized, and the skateboard isn't entirely useless. Also, Pepper no longer speaks in this one, which is probably for the better, and the island itself is quite lively and has a lot for you to do. I planted lots of bulbs, and they haven't grown into the color I expected. What bothered me a little was how disjointed and not really present the story was, but that's a rather subjective criticism. What's less subjective is the quality of the main stunts that Pepper has to perform. They're pretty boring. I'm gonna be honest, I didn't complete this game. I just wasn't having a lot of fun, and also I got irreversibly stuck on some rogue geometry, having to restart more than once. Regardless, I don't have any strong feelings about this one. It's certainly more polished, and if you had fun with it, then hey, more power to you. Wait, actually, I do feel strongly about one aspect of the game, the goddamn music. Sick, dude. Oh man, I wasn't looking forward to this one. Drone Racers is the last LEGO racing game of this era, and it was developed by Attention to Detail, the same studio that made LEGO Racers 2. Some call Drone Racers a spiritual successor to the LEGO Racers series, but to me, that's just not right. It reuses a lot of the power-ups from LEGO Racers 2, and a few visual effects remain, but that's about it. The aesthetics and game feel are different, and the soul is just absolutely not present here. The game attempts to have some semblance of a story, but it goes nowhere. 
The track selection is tiny and most of the tracks aren't even that distinct. Not to mention the driving feels a little odd. You can upgrade your car's innards, but the option to build a car is similar to Stunt Rally, in that you don't actually build your car, you just choose its tires, chassis, and color. The game lacks any sort of LEGO identity rivaled only by LEGO friends. That's very bad. This shouldn't have been a LEGO game at all, but that's ultimately a pointless criticism seeing as this game wouldn't have been made if not for LEGO. After all, it's based on a theme. Still, in a different timeline where this project wasn't tied to LEGO in any way and they could have done more with the world and the mechanics, maybe Drum Racers could have been a decent game. Unfortunately, what we're left with here is a game that, while looking kinda neat, doesn't incorporate its LEGO origins, doesn't improve upon or expand the racing mechanics, and effectively ended the LEGO Racers franchise. A real shame. There is one more title remaining in the pre-Star Wars LEGO lineup. Bionicle the Game came out in 2003, along with the Mask of Light film, which I'm still quite fond of. Fun fact, I still actually own the CD for this game. My LEGO Racers CDs weren't so lucky, LEGO Racers 2 was broken into pieces by my baby brother, and LEGO Racers 1 was eaten by our optical drive. After so many lukewarm experiences in the past few entries on this list, I was really hoping Bionicles would cleanse my palate. I remember liking this game as a kid, even though I sucked and couldn't get very far. One thing that I recall is not knowing how to use melee attacks and only being able to shoot these energy projectiles. And boy was I disappointed when I found out that was the entire game. Just shoot the energy at your enemy, that's what Bionicles is about. Definitely not the unique weapons and play features of the Toa. Because Bionicles being a bit smarter than that, what does that even mean? The game feels rushed as hell and apparently that's exactly what it was. Half of the levels are on rail sections and the story completely disintegrates as it goes on. And the boss battles are some of the most boring I have ever played. And I like the visuals and sound design, the game is clearly polished in some aspects, but over all, it's just a big disappointment. Behold, Makuta! I, the seventh Toa, have come to banish your darkness forever. I think I want Makuta to win. Finally, we've arrived in 2005, and LEGO games just changed forever. I could make a whole nother video about LEGO Star Wars, it just did everything right. The gameplay is incredibly fun and to some extent utilizes both building and collecting, the two main features of LEGO. There are dozens of characters you can tour around with, not to mention the selection of levels, most of which are pretty replayable. And you also get co-op on top of that. While the Star Wars setting provides a story right off the bat, the way Traveler sales have been able to simplify it and insert universally understandable humor into it is honestly admirable. The game released alongside the third film, and honestly, the timing here couldn't have been better. The game sold like crazy, making Traveler's Tales the go-to LEGO developer from that point onward. And the rest is history. But even after LEGO Star Wars, there have been a few deviations from the formula. Namely, Bionicle Heroes in 2006, which is still quite beloved, but definitely has some of the LEGO Star Wars features already present. LEGO Universe in 2010, an MMO that sadly didn't get very far, and of course, LEGO City Undercover in 2012. Basically, LEGO's take on GTA that still features a lot of that classic LEGO gameplay. We've also seen quite a few building-focused LEGO games in recent years, namely LEGO Worlds in 2017, as well as LEGO Brick Tales in 2022 both offering a different take on virtual LEGOs. The one game I was genuinely excited for was LEGO 2K Drive. This seemed like it was gonna be a true successor to LEGO Racers, a return to form, finally bringing LEGO Racing games into AAA territory. Hey, there it is. Almost forgot it's a 2K game. So what's the verdict? Did LEGO truly lose out on potentially great games by putting all their gameplay eggs in one basket? Or were those early creations really just dead ends or stepping stones in getting to where they are now? Honestly, it's a bit of both. Looking back, we can see that the more successful attempts in the early days usually incorporate the nature of LEGO into their gameplay, or even other aspects of the experience. LEGO Star Wars was simply the first one to do this really well in all regards. It's no surprise they ran with it. But I think it's fair to acknowledge this safer, post-Star Wars approach to making LEGO games did leave some creativity on the table. 
There are many genres that LEGO hasn't touched in years, or ever, and I for one would be interested in seeing them tackle those, now with more experience and better funding. With so many new LEGO games coming out, and the release of the Skywalker Saga marking an end of sorts for the classic formula, there is a real possibility we are on the cusp of yet another experimentation period for LEGO. And I know that's a bit too optimistic, but I sure hope we are. Oh hey, I'm back to normal. Welcome home. Oh, uh, can I help you? <clears throat> Go to gamersups.gg slash Corax and get free samples. No credit card required. Is, is that it? Yes. Can you leave? No. Hey, thanks for watching, and thanks to Gamersubs for sponsoring. The free samples are only available for the next 48 hours, so if you want to see more of what I do here, this is the easiest way to support me while getting free stuff in the process. And last but not least, a big thank you to my patrons. Anyway, here are some more videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye